So this particular video is how nuclear fusion ignition works. I'm a rocket scientist, and as long as you watch this video, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand rocket science, because I'm going to explain it to you in a way that makes sense. What is nuclear fusion and what is nuclear fusion ignition? Great news, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to completely understand the new breakthrough technology that was just discovered that will help the entire world gain clean energy. All you have to do is watch this video. Hi, I am Olympia LaPointe, host of Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com and the author of the Answers Unleashed book series. I have a series of videos to help you understand science. And in my quantum deciding program, I'm creating these science videos to help you see the future using breakthrough science that's out in the public and in the news. And today's video is based on nuclear fusion. Now, before we go into what nuclear fusion is, I want to simply tell you this. By you watching this video and understanding what nuclear fusion is, you're gonna be a step ahead of the rest of the population because you're gonna understand the science on how clean energy is going to help this earth for decades and centuries to come. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand the groundbreaking science that just occurred within finding nuclear fusion ignition. It's actually used to create long lasting energy for the entire earth so the earth doesn't run out of energy. In this particular video, we're going to see how the clean energy is formed through nuclear fusion ignition. All right, I'm going to put on my glasses here, my prescription glasses, so I can see. This particular video is how nuclear fusion ignition works. I am a rocket scientist and TED speaker and author of the Answers Unleashed book series. Before I get into how nuclear fusion works, I'm gonna ask you this basic question. This is a question that deals with couples. Imagine two different couples. One couple has romantic explosive energy and the other couple has long lasting connection. Which couple do you think will last longer? Is it the explosive couple that has chemistry or do you think it's going to be the burning romantic connection? I'll have you think about that for a little bit. Which couple will last longer? If we use the same idea and apply it to science, we can look at the difference between two fundamental concepts in physics, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Nuclear fission is explosive, where nuclear fusion is long lasting. So if you pick the couple on the right, you are now looking at the fundamental aspects of long lasting connections, nuclear fusion, where the energy is gonna last for a long time. I always say this is where one plus one gives you more than two. You have two connecting beings and they produce long lasting results. In December, 2022, there was a groundbreaking discovery. Nuclear fusion ignition was recently discovered and the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California was able to discover this groundbreaking nuclear fusion ignition. This is where you put in energy and you get more energy out than what you put in. It's called a net gain. This is where one plus one gives you more than two. The energy that you put in will give you more energy when it comes out. Now, in this particular talk, we're going to look at what is nuclear fission? How does it work? Why is it so important? And how can it be used? All right, we have to understand what nuclear fusion is, but in order to understand that, we have to understand the explosive power of the opposite of nuclear fusion. In the 1930s, you had physicists looking at the importance of understanding how to use atoms in an appropriate way that wouldn't cause destruction. The opposite of an atomic or hydrogen bomb is nuclear fusion. But let's look at this a little bit deeper. 
In the 1930s, Albert Einstein was able to warn humanity of the deadly consequences of using fission and fusion. Nuclear fusion was found and known all the way back in 1930s, specifically 1939, but there was no way to understand how to make sure nuclear fusion wouldn't be as explosive, wouldn't be as explosive as nuclear fission. Now, let me break this down. Nuclear fission is when you have something that explodes. Take this example, a hydrogen bomb. It is potentially a thousand times stronger than an atomic bomb. This requires nuclear fission. This is the explosive reaction that I was talking about earlier. Fission occurs when a neutron slams into a larger atom, forcing it to excite and split into two smaller atoms. And this release initiates a chain reaction, and that causes this large explosion of an atomic bomb. Now, if we look at the opposite of an atomic bomb or a hydrogen bomb, it's actually based on mathematics. Fission is something that explodes. So we can see that with the blue mathematics chart here, this mathematics graph of an exponential function. Fusion, on the other hand, is a logarithmic function and it burns slower. So the opposite of the explosive energy is the long burning energy of fusion. Now, we've seen fusion before. And I'm going to share with you how we've seen it. The sun. Fusion gives long-lasting energy. Now, if we consider what fusion is, it is a long-lasting device to put in more energy and get out even more energy than what you put in. An example is the sun. Fusion occurs when two atoms slam together to form a heavier atom, like when two hydrogen atoms fuse to form one helium atom. The same process that powers the sun is what creates this enormous amount of energy. And if we think about the planets and how they rotate around the sun, the sun has an electromagnetic force to it that keeps things stable. The sun has a great electromagnetic force that is stable and Earth and other planets rotate around it because of its stability. Now, how does nuclear fusion work specifically? Now, scientists knew that nuclear fusion worked a long time ago, but they didn't have a way to describe how it was going to work and how to contain it in a laboratory, because if they were unsuccessful in containing it in a laboratory, they would take out and kill an entire country. That's how explosive this particular reaction could be if it couldn't be contained. So there were three risks that the scientists had to just get around. Now, there were a couple of risks to creating this nuclear fusion technology. Number one, they had to make sure that they could heat the atoms hot enough so it'd be hotter than the interior of the sun. And that was going to be very tough because they not only had to contain this heat, they also had to understand how to make metals to contain the pressure and the heat of these atoms. And third, they had to create a stable electromagnetic force that would remain constant in the entire process of the nuclear fusion. Without these three characteristics, fusion would become explosive and it could potentially wipe out cities and countries with the explosive technology. So the scientists had to find a way to contain it in a lab. The scientists at the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory were able to find three steps to create this nuclear fusion and make it work. The first step was they had to superheat the hydrogen atoms and the hydrogen atoms had to be so superheated that 192 massive lasers had to heat the atoms so it could be strong enough to hold the energy. And the step two was the fusion reaction. So the fusion reaction is when you get more energy than when you put in. This is when two or more atomic nuclei are combined to form one or more 
different atomic nuclei and some atomic particles. Long story short, it's where one plus one gives you more than two. And lastly, the third step is understanding that helium is the output. This is neutron energy that was released that was stable and long lasting. With the first step of heating the hydrogen atoms and combining them, and then the second step, which is the fusion reaction that gave you more energy output than when you put in. And the third step is releasing stable, long-lasting helium. That process gives you nuclear fusion. Now, why is nuclear fusion so important? There's a history behind this. You see, coal, oil, fuel can only last so long. They're limited resources. And if we look at the consumption of these products, they're contributing to climate change, water pollution, thermal pollution, solid waste disposal. Coal, oil, and fuel only last so long. These are limited resources. You see, there are climate change issues associated with these products. With the gases that are created from this type of consumption, the earth is experiencing higher temperatures across the entire globe. We're seeing icebergs melt. We're seeing severe type of weather storms. The, the range of climate change issues are endless if we don't find a way to create clean energy now. How will it be used? I have three predictions how this particular nuclear fusion will be used in the future. How will this be used? I predict there will be three different ways in which nuclear fusion will be used to help people in the future. Nuclear power plants. Right now, nuclear power plants deal with this fission and explosive technology. And there are issues and safety concerns with nuclear power plants. There could be Chernobyl-like accidents, or there could be accidents like earthquakes that happen in Japan where nuclear power plants could possibly rupture. With this new fusion technology, there will be a request for companies to build nuclear fusion power plants so there will be long-lasting sustainable energy that will reduce the safety risk of currently operating nuclear power plants. The second way that I see this being used is deep space travel. Right now we go to Mars and we go to the moon and it takes fuel to go there. For example, you do not have enough fuel in a tank to go to Mars. As a result, scientists use chaos theory in space to travel to Mars. But with new fusion technology, there will be engines made that will allow there to be long distance space travel, not only to Mars, but to other planets where the space engine and the spaceship comes back on the same fuel source. And lastly, climate change will be reduced. Fusion will reduce the fossil fuels that's used to heat the earth. Nuclear fusion will be a way that will help reduce the climate change and how that climate change is affecting the temperatures across our world. So if you remember the first couple that had explosive energy that last only a short amount of time, and you compare that to the couple that had long-lasting energy, you'll see that the long-lasting energy is what is going to give you the energy for the future. The couple that's going to last a long time is the couple with the deep connection. That energy is going to last a very long time, and that energy is going to help our Earth. If you remember that, that process will help you understand nuclear fusion. I am Olympia LaPointe, host of Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com, and I hope you have enjoyed this short lecture that helps you understand nuclear fusion. I look forward to seeing you next time. I am Olympia LaPointe. Check out AnswersUnleashed.com.